How's it going, everybody? Uh, it's Tyler. I'm in Green Mountain CrossFit North, and I want to talk to you today about how to bail safely out of a handstand. Uh, there are three possible ways to do this, one of which we're going to talk about today. That's a cartwheel out, one of which is a forward roll out, a uh, pretty cool skill to have, and we'll do maybe a separate video on that. And the third one is a back flop, which is neither cool nor ideal, and it doesn't actually help you get better at handstands. So, uh, the cartwheel bail happens when you've kicked up to handstand, maybe you've found balance for a second, but you start to go too far and you're unable to save it. The cartwheel bail allows you to open to the side and come down uh, in a safe way. So if you already know how to cartwheel, this is probably going to feel pretty familiar to you. If you don't know how to cartwheel, we're going to give you a couple of stages in which to uh, sort of learn this skill, right? So the cartwheel bail looks like, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you've found a handstand line, maybe it's balanced, maybe it's not, you start to lose it, and you go up to the side, cartwheel out. Uh, this becomes a really important skill for learning to balance in the middle of the room because your brain needs to know that you can exit safely or it will never allow you to get to that full balanced position, right? So step number one is going to be to decide which arm is dominant and non-dominant. Most of you already know that. Uh, for me, my right arm is dominant and that's the arm that feels stronger on the ground when I'm in a handstand. So when I cartwheel out, I almost always cartwheel with my left leg out, and there is benefit to you being able to do this on both sides, but initially it's going to be easiest to learn with your dominant hand planted. My non-dominant hand is going to take a small step out, sort of diagonally, as if I were going to handstand walk. My shoulders open up to that side, and then my non-dominant leg on the same side as the stepping hand comes down to the side. So I've made some space by stepping forward to allow that momentum to carry sort of diagonally versus flopping straight over on my back. So a couple of things we can do. We can start with our basic chest-to-wall handstand. Uh, so you can come up into the chest-to-wall handstand, and you should be fairly comfortable pretty close to the wall here. So we're going to come in maybe five or six inches from the wall, and I'm just going to step out and open the shoulders. Come back in. Step out, open the shoulders, come back in. Once that feels fairly comfortable and I'm not uh, completely afraid for my life here, I'm going to step out and then take this leg down to the side. So initially, you may want a spotter to help you with this, but ideally we're able to use these drills to help us learn this skill on our own. This allows us to take then, once you're comfortable with that, coming off the wall sort of to the side, make sure, number one, you have a clear space to the side of you. Uh, it's no fun to kick over your side table or your lamp or your cat uh, or your neighbor. So, um, once you're comfortable with that, you can bring that out away from the wall a little bit and practice some of those scissor drills that we've talked about in other videos. Here, we may want to try to find balance, but we may also just want to purposely overbalance uh, very gently and practice that step and exit to the side. Again, I'm keeping my dominant hand planted for now. I'm not worried about doing both sides of this just yet. To learn the skill, to learn the movement, I want to stay with the more comfortable side. Uh, and then you can practice the opposite side. So bringing this away from the wall a little bit, we're going to come up into our chest-to-wall handstand. From here, maybe I can, uh, about a foot away from the wall now, a little bit further away, maybe I can start to do some scissor drills, maybe I can start to find some balance, and then I'm going to start to overbalance purposely, step, and exit. This becomes uh, more and more important as we go to freestanding handstands. Uh, so eventually, we would like to be able to kick up into the middle of the room, and this gives our brain a safe, comfortable exit so that we know that we can start to attempt freestanding handstands. If I miss my balance, I can go over and out safely, right? Uh, prerequisites for this, you should be very comfortable with chest-to-wall handstand. You should be able to hold for at least 30 seconds within a few inches of the wall. If you're there, we've got the strength and we probably have some of the balancing capability in the hand. Um, you probably should be at least comfortable with a scissor drill and a spotter, uh, and you should not be in that big broken banana back uh, handstand. You want to be able to hold those positions in a fairly hollow body. Um, so, hopefully you guys have fun. This is a great skill to move away from the wall and into the middle of the room. It's really important that your brain feels safe. Uh, enjoy it, stay safe, and I'll see you at the gym.